Hi, in this video I would talk about synaptic plasticity. Here is our brain taking information from the sensory environment, processing that information and the output is behavior. Now our sensory environment is not constant, it is changing day by day, it is fluctuating and in order to make our behavior consistent, our brain need to be flexible. There should be some degree of flexibility in our nervous system such that we can adapt to the ever-changing environment. And that degree of flexibility is known as plasticity. At our nervous system, plasticity could occur at different levels, starting from behavioral level to circuit level to cellular and molecular level. Today I would talk about cellular level of plasticity and plasticity in the junction between the two neurons, that means in synapses. You might think that Plastic changes at a neuronal level could only occur at synapses, but this, this notion is not true because other levels like membrane conductances, the intrinsic excitable properties of the neuron, those could be also plastic. So plastic, plastic changes could occur at different different levels. One such plastic change could occur at, synap at synapses, at synaptic level by changing and altering the synaptic strength. And the plastic changes at synapses could occur at different time scales. It could range from short term plasticity which is lasting for minutes to long term plasticity which lasts for several hours to days. Now probably our synapses are plastic that idea was first posed by Ramonica Hall. But we can ask that what is the measure of the plastic changes at the level of synapses? What we can use to quantify that there is a alteration in the synaptic strength or synaptic transmission efficiency at a synaptic level. Here is a clue. In, in, in slice culture where you have brain slices and you are able to record from certain neurons, you can, you can stimulate the presynapses and you can record from postsynapse. Now if you stimulate the presynapse, you are going to record the postsynaptic activity. Now there are certain protocols available which can change the synaptic strength and these protocols are, are long-term potentiation protocol which can increase the synaptic strength for a long time period and LTD protocol which can reduce the synaptic strength for a long time. Let's see first what happens in case of long-term potentiation protocol. In order to evoke long-term potentiation, researchers give high frequency stimulation generally 100 hertz frequency stimulation lasting for one second. After that high frequency stimulation, when they give same amount of current injection, they can find an increase in amplitude of the postsynaptic potential, suggesting that the strength of the synapses has changed and has increased in this case. Other way of seeing this data is to plot the slope over time. Now, If the slope is more than the baseline, that means synaptic efficacy has increased. And just the opposite is long-term depression. Here you have given a current injection, you are able to record a postsynaptic response and you give a low frequency stimulation, a 10 hertz frequency stimulation lasting for 10 minutes and then you give the same amount of uh, uh, current injection. Now you, what you are able to get is a is reduce, reduced amplitude of postsynaptic potential. And other way of showing this data is to plot the slopes over time where you can see slopes are after the LTD induction the slopes are low than the baseline suggesting that synaptic strength could be altered and this idea was first explored in 1960 to 1970 by Bliss and Lomo and they have used a rabbit hippocampal, rabbit hippocampal slices where they can stimulate the perforant pathway coming from the entorenal cortex and they can record from the granule cells of the dented gyrus. After high frequency stimulus, they, see, they have seen the synaptic strength has been increased because there is a boosted EPSP slopes suggesting synaptic strength has changed and synaptic strength has increased. Now the question comes whether that kind of artificial protocol can change synaptic strength. It suggests that synapses are not rigid, they are plastic, their strength could be changed but the question is whether similar kind of plastic changes could happen underlying learning and experience dependent task. In this experiment, researchers have exposed the mouse to another dark box where they would get a shock and this kind of training is known as inhibitory avoidance training. 
it would create a memory in the fly in 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 the mouse brain underlying this kind of task people have found that in certain neuronal region there is increase in synaptic uh, post synaptic potentials that means underlying this kind of learning task there are ltp like changes now people have observed that underlying sub several learning task pavlovian conditioning there is increase in post synaptic calcium in 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 certain region of the neuron in fly in in drosophila people have seen an underlying aversive conditioning where they train the fly with the odor which is coupled with a shock and then another another odor which doesn't come with a shock and if the fly have learned the uh, lesson properly it would avoid the odor which comes with the shock when represented simultaneously now underlying this kind of learning paradigm people have found that in fly learning center calcium levels has increased using calcium indicator dye they have quantified this calcium has increased but the question is what is the implication of calcium increase at the post synaptic level people found that calcium increase is important for synaptic strength alteration in when calcium level is increased people can after high frequency stimulus people found a change in synaptic strength but when calcium is chelated that change was gone suggesting calcium was necessary also uncaging calcium at the post synaptic level which would drastically increase the calcium levels at the post synaptic region would change the synaptic efficacy suggesting calcium is also important and also sufficient for long term potentiation or change in synaptic strength decades of work has summarized that there are certain signaling pathways underlying calcium can give rise to plastic changes and there are certain decoder molecules which can read the spatio temporal dynamics of calcium and can write plastic changes at the level of synapses one such important player in this whole synaptic plasticity or synaptic strength alteration is nmd receptor nmd receptor is known as coincidence detector let's just see what coincidence detector means here is the presynaptic action potential coming down to the presynaptic terminal and it is going to release vesicle full of neurotransmitter and the neurotransmitter can bind to glutamate receptor assuming the synapse is glutamatergic and it would allow calcium in, it, it would allow cation influx from the glutamate receptors but only the cation could get inside from ampa receptors not in nmd receptors now nmd recept once sodium comes in sodium can make the inner side of the post synapse more depolarized thereby repelling the magnesium block and thereby allowing calcium in calcium influx from the nmd receptor so the nmd receptor need two criteria to open one is the binding of glutamate second is repelling of the magnesium block and binding of glutamate gives the nmd receptor idea about presynaptic activity status while binding of while repelling of magnesium gives the nmd receptor idea about the postsynaptic activity status at a molecular level presynaptic activity status and the postsynaptic activity status are coupled and thereby a coincidence is detected and humongous amount of calcium flows in the resting the resting calcium concentration inside the postsynapse is 100 nanomolars after coincidence detection and thereby calcium influx it rises tenfold and goes as high as 1 micromolar now if you block the root of nmd receptor that means if you block the root of calcium entry by this coincidence detector nmd receptor you see the synaptic strength could not be altered the synaptic strength doesn't increase when you block the nmd receptor and also the animals the mouse where the nmd receptor was blocked by pharmacological agent they have certain difficulties in spatial navigation task in morris water maze now the question is what is very important to understand is the spatio temporal dynamics of the calcium and the spatio temporal dynamics of the calcium has a message and which could be decoded by certain molecular players which can give rise to plastic changes at the synaptic level now this calcium dynamics could be of different time scale and it could range it could have different magnitude of concentrations some calcium dynamics could has very high magnitude of concentration 
and it could it could last for as as long as few milliseconds whereas whereas other calcium dynamics could la uh, last for about minutes and it could have relatively low uh, magnitude and both of these kind of dynamics could be read by different biophysical mechanisms inside the neuron now people have found that cam k2 which is a calcium calmodulin based protein kinase it can read the brief and transient increase in calcium level whereas calcineurin which is a protein phosphatase can read the prolonged sustained increase elevated level of calcium and they can give rise to plastic changes in different different ways now for knowing more about how plastic changes could brought about by these molecules you can see my other videos long term potentiation and long term depression if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up please like share and subscribe thank you